in supervised machine learning, there are regression problems and there are classification problems. And it's a regression problem if the output or the target is something numeric. Uh, here is an example where it could be considered either a classification problem or a, num or a regression problem. Input, so we're going to use the penguins data set. And the input is going to be the bill length of the penguin. And the output is going to be 1 if the species is Adelie and 0 otherwise. So we can think of the outputs as either just like the numbers 1 and 0, okay, in which case it would make sense to do, do this as a regression problem. Or we can think of them as just two discrete categories, like 1 for true and 0 for false. Then it would make more sense to use um, a classification for this. And it'll turn out that classification is the much better su suited uh, type of problem for handling this sort of question. But first, since we already know some linear regression, let's see what happens if we try to use linear regression on this problem. Okay, so I've imported the data set. And let me make a new column for this desired output. So I'm going to say df and then I'm going to call it is Adley. And I'm eventually going to have both a float and a true. So here I'm, or and a bool. So here I'm going to have bool for Boolean. Okay, and this is going to be is the species, so like true or false, is the species the Adley species? So uh, let's look at this. So the first few are all this Adelie species. So we should have true for our values in this uh, new Boolean column. And then if we scroll over here, we see these trues. OK, perfect. And let me also put in a float version of this. So I'm going to convert all of these into zeros and ones. So the trues I'm going to convert to one and the Pulses, I'm going to convert to zero. So I, I looked up on Stack Overflow what's the recommended way to do this conversion. And what I, what I found in that was you should, one option is to do dot as type and then say, what do you want to convert this series to? Okay, so let me just show you what the series looks like before I do the conversion. So here the data type is bool. Okay, and then I can say dot as type. And let's try putting float here. OK, great. So uh, let's put that into a new column. So we'll say this is the is Adley float. Okay, and uh, now if I look at this data frame, Hey, we have all ones over here on the right, corresponding to these all trues. But if we look at the bottom of this data frame, oh, so instead of head, I do tail. Okay, then we're in some other, some other species called Gen 2 or Gen 2. And here we have all falses and all zeros. Okay, great. And let's just look at this data using Altair. So I'm going to make a scatter plot so using mark circle. And then on the x-axis is going to be bill length. And y-axis, for now, let's have the trues and falses. So we'll have is Adelie pool. So this gives a quick look at how the data is. So we're never going to have a perfect function for deciding is it Adelie or not using only bill length because you can see there are some values where that value of bill length could correspond to Adelie or it could not correspond to Adelie. So, so we don't expect a perfect function, but that's fine because this is real world data. And in real world data, you don't expect to have like perfectly well-defined functions. It's going to be enough to have some model for this data. Okay, and how would this look different if we if we had the float column instead? So very similar. It's a little harder to get a quick overview of how this looks, at least for me. And order of the true and the false have been swapped. Okay, now false is on the bottom and true is on the top. And otherwise looks basically the same. 
And for the scikit-learn portion of this video, it would be equally fine to use bool or to use float. But for the altair portion of the video, once I like draw a line on top of the altair chart, that part is going to look better using the floats. So that's why I have this float column. Okay, so le let me say again that in the end, linear regression isn't the right way to do this, but let's try using linear regression. So from sklearn.linearmodel, import linear regression. Okay, and so that was the import step. Now let's instantiate or create one of these. Okay, and I'm going to give it the variable name reg. Okay, but you can give it whatever variable name you want. And then reg.fit. And remember that what goes inside the square brackets is supposed to be a list. So that's why I have these double square brackets here. And we're going to use just this one column. So it'll be a list of length one. So those are the inputs. And then the target or the outputs, that is going to be this, uh, this float column that I just made. So is Adelie float. Okay, great. And let's see, let me copy this, this Altair chart, and let me save it with the name C. Okay, and then let me make another one. I'll call this C1. And so this is going to be very similar, but I want the Y axis to correspond to the, uh, the fit linear regression line. So I guess first I need to put the values inside of the data frame. So let's make a new column called pred for prediction. And this will be the predicted values. So reg.predict. And then same inputs as here. Okay, so we use the bill length inputs. Okay, so if I look at, look at the top of this, you can see I have this new uh, prediction column. Okay, great. And so how do I want to change this C1? Well, in, instead of a scatter plot, hey, okay, since it's just going to be a straight line, I'm going to use a line plot. And then to make it a little easier to look at, I'm going to change the color to red. And then instead of these true outputs, I'm going to have the predicted outputs. Okay, and uh, let's look at both of these on top of each other. And so does this give you a sense of why linear regression isn't the right thing to use for this data? So like, I mean, you might complain, well, what does 0 0.8 mean? And that's actually not a problem. So 0 0.8 can very easily be interpreted as saying there's an 80% chance, according to the model, that it's an Adelie penguin. Okay, so that is fine. The bigger problems are like, how should you interpret 1.3, some output like this? Or how should you interpret negative 0.8 like this? And in, in general, just um, the model here, okay, this part in red, looks so different from the true data, like doesn't really fit the shape of the true data at all, that we want to look for a different sort of model. And that's what we're going to use logistic regression for in the next video. And uh, just as a preview, I'll say logistic regression has regression in the name, but we use logistic regression for classification problems, not for regression problems. Okay, thank you for watching.